Before we talk about the fundamental ideas behind Ethereum and cryptocurrency, perhaps it'd be nice to uh, to talk about the the origin story of Bitcoin mm -hmm. and the uh, mystery of Satoshi Nakamoto. Mm -hmm. You give a talk that started with sort of asking the question, what did uh, Satoshi Nakamoto actually invent? Mm -hmm. uh, maybe you could say, who is Satoshi Nakamoto and what did he invent? Sure. So Satoshi Nakamoto is... Uh, the name uh, by which we know the uh, person who uh, originally came up with Bitcoin. So the reason why I say the name by which we know is that uh, this is a um, anonymous uh, fellow who has uh, shown himself to us only um, over the internet uh, just uh, by uh, first publishing the white paper uh, for Bitcoin, uh, then uh, releasing the original source code for Bitcoin, and then talking to the very early Bitcoin community on Bitcoin forums and uh, and of interacting with them and helping uh, the project along for a couple of years. Um, and then at some point in uh, late 2010 to early 2011, he disappeared. Uh, so Bitcoin is uh, a fairly unique project in how it has this uh, kind of mythical kind of quasi godlike founder who just kind of popped in and did the thing and kind of disappeared and we've somehow just never heard from him again so in, in 2008 was so the white paper was the first do you know yes. if the white paper was the first time the name was actually appears satoshi nakamoto i believe so so how is it possible that the creator of such a impactful project mm -hmm. remains anonymous that's a tough question and there's no similarity to it in the history of technology, as far as I'm aware. Yeah. So one possibility is that it's Hal Finney, um, because uh, Hal Finney was uh, kind of also active in the Bitcoin community and as um, Hal Finney um, in those uh, two beginning years. And uh, Hal... Who is Hal Finney, maybe? You uh, he is uh, one of the people in the end of early cypherpunk community. He was... Uh, so he's a computer scientist? Just yeah, computer scientists, cryptographers, people interested in uh, like technology, internet freedom, like those kinds of topics. Was it correct that, that I read that he seemed to have been involved in either the earliest or the first transaction of Bitcoin. Yes. The first transaction of Bitcoin was between Satoshi and Alfini. Do you think he knew who Satoshi was? If he, if was he wasn't Satoshi, Satoshi, probably no. How is it possible to work so closely with people and nevertheless not know anything about their fundamental identity? Is, is this like a natural sort of characteristic of the internet? Hmm. Like if we were to think about it, because you and I just met now Mm -hmm. There's a there's a depth of knowledge that we, we now have about each other that's like physical. Like that's my true. vision system is able to recognize you. Mm -hmm. I can also verify your identity of uniqueness. Like yeah, this, mm -hmm. like it's very hard to fake you being you. Yeah. Uh, so the internet, <laughs> the internet has a fundamentally different quality to it, which is just fascinating. Can you, maybe yeah, no, this is that? definitely interesting. As uh, I definitely just know a lot of people just by their internet handles. Yeah. And like, to me, when I think of them, like I see their internet handles and uh, one of them has a kind of profile picture as this uh, kind of face that's kind of not quite human with a bunch of kind of psychedelic colors in it. And when I visualize him, like I just visualize that. That, <laughs> not an actual face. Yeah. You are the creator of the second well, he's currently the second most popular cryptocurrency, mm -hmm. uh, Ethereum. So on this topic, if we just stick on Satoshi Nakamoto for, for a little bit longer, mm -hmm. you may be the most qualified person to speak to the psychology of this anonymity that we're talking about. Mm -hmm. Like your identity is known, like we, yes. I've just verified <laughs> it. But uh, from your perspective, what are the benefits in uh, creating a cryptocurrency and then remaining anonymous? Like if it can psychoanalyze mm -hmm. Satoshi Nakamoto, is there something interesting there? Or is it, it just a peculiar quirk of him? It definitely helps create this uh, kind of image of this uh, kind of neutral thing that doesn't belong to anyone. Um, that you know, you've created a project, okay. 
and because you're anonymous and because uh, you also uh, disappear or as unfortunately happened to Halfini, if that is him, he ended up, uh, I think, dying of uh, Lou Gehrig's disease and he's in a cryogenic freezer now. But like if you pop in and you and uh, you create it and, and you're gone and uh, all that's remaining of uh, that whole process is the thing itself, then like... No one can go and try to um, and if interpret any of your other behavior and try to understand like, oh, the like this person wrote this thing um, in some essay at a, at age sixteen where he expressed particular opinions about democracy, and so because of that, this project is like is a statement that's trying to do this specific thing. Yeah. Like it, instead, it creates uh, this uh, environment where. And the thing is what you make of it and hmm. it doesn't have the yeah right the, the the burden of your other ideas political thought and so on so so now that we're sitting with you do you feel the burden of being kind of the face of ethereum mm-hmm. i mean there's a very large community of developers mm-hmm. but nevertheless yeah is there like a burden associated with that there definitely is this is uh, definitely a big reason why i've uh, been trying to kind of push for the Ethereum ecosystem to become more decentralized in many ways. Just encouraging a lot of kind of core Ethereum work to happen outside of the Ethereum foundation and of expanding the number of people that are making different kinds of decisions, having kind of multiple software implementations instead of one and all of these things. Like there's a lot of things that I've tried to do to and remove myself as a single point of uh, failure because that is something that a lot of people criticize, criticize me for. Um, so if you look at like the most uh, fundamentally successful open source projects, uh-huh. it seems that it's mm. like a sad reality when I think uh-huh. about it, is it seems to be that one person is a crucial contributor often. If you look at Linus from, mm-hmm. from, uh, for, uh, for Linux, for the kernel. Yeah, that it's, is possible. And I'm definitely not planning to disappear. <laughs> <laughs> That's an interesting uh, tension that mm-hmm. uh, projects like this kind of desire a single entity, and yet they're fundamentally distributed. Mm-hmm. I, don't, I don't know if there's something interesting to say about that kind of structure and thinking about the future of cryptocurrency. Does there need to be a leader? There's different kinds of leaders. You know, there's uh, there's dictators who control all the money. There's uh, people who control organizations. There's uh, kind of high priests that just have themselves and their Twitter followers. Uh, what kind of leader are you? Would you say? Yeah, you know, in these days, uh, <laughs> I actually uh, a bit more in the high pri- in the high priest direction than before. Yeah, like. I definitely actually don't do all that much of kind of going around and like ordering Ethereum Foundation people to do things because I think those things are important. I, if, if there's something that I do think is important, I I do just usually kind of say it publicly or just kind of say it to people. And uh, quite often, projects just kind of start doing it. Do you think cryptocurrency may become the main currency in the world one day? So do, where, where do you think we're headed in terms of the role of currency, the structure mm-hmm. type of currency in the world? I definitely expect um, fiat currencies to continue to exist and continue to be strong. And I definitely expect kind of fiat currencies to also digitize in their own way over the next couple of decades. What's fiat currency, by the way? Just- oh, just like things like US dollars and like dollars and euros and yen and these other things. And they're sort of backed by governments. Yes. But I also expect uh, kind of cryptocurrencies to play this kind of important role in just making sure that people always have an alternative if uh, fiat currencies start breaking. So like if, or if you're in, you know, some kind of very high inflation place like Venezuela, for example, or if uh, your um, like country just kind of gets cut off uh, from, like um, cut off from other financial systems because of like something the banks do, like if any kind of, if there's even like some major trade disruption or, or something worse happens, then like cryptocurrencies are the sort of thing that just because of their kind of global neutrality, they're just kind of always there and you can keep using them. 
It's interesting that you're quite humble about the possibilities of the future of cryptocurrency. Mm. You, you don't think there's a possible future where it mm. uh, becomes the main set of currency because it I... feels like fiat. It feels like mm -hmm. the centralized control by governments of currency is limiting somehow. Maybe mm. my naive utopian yeah. view of the world. It's uh, I mean, it's definitely very possible. Uh, I mean, I think like for cryptocurrencies being the main form of, of uh, value to kind of work well, like you do need to have uh, some uh, much more price stability than they have today. And I mean, there are now stable coins and there are kind of crypto cryptocurrencies that try to be more stable than existing things like Bitcoin and Ether. But I mean, that just is, I, to me, the kind of the main challenge. Do you think, oh, that's, do you think that's a characteristic of just, just being the early days? I mean, it's such a <clears throat> young concept that 10 years is nothing in the history of money. Yeah. And I think it's a combination of two things, right? One is, um, it's, uh, uh, it's still early days, but the other is a kind of more durable, any kind of economic problem, which is that like demand for currency is volatile, right? Because of like recessions, booms, changes to technology, lots of things, and of people's demand for how much currency they want to hold changes. And if you have a currency that has a fixed supply, then the change in demand has to be entirely expressed as a change in value of the currency. Mm. And so what that means is that kind of the volatility of demand becomes entirely translated into volatility in kind of prices of things denominated in that currency. But if you have a currency where instead the supply can change and so the supply can kind of go up when there's more demand then you have the supply kind of absorbing more of that volatility and so the price of the currency would absorb less of the volatility on that topic so bitcoin does have a limited supply a specific fixed mm -hmm. supply yes uh what's what's the idea and the ethereum doesn't but can you clarify mm -hmm. Just on the comment you just made, is Ethereum qualify to the kind of currency that you're talking about and being flexible in the supply? You know, it's a bit more flexible, but kind of the thing that you would really want is something that's kind of specifically flexible in response to how valuable the currency is. And and I'd recommend you know, look at stable coins as well. So like things like DAI, for example. It's uh, like how you spell that? D A I. And what uh, what's stable coins? Is it a type of cryptocurrency? It is a type of cryptocurrency. It's um, a type of cryptocurrency that's issued by a smart contract, one of these Ethereum computer programs, that um, where the smart contract holds a bunch of ether, and then it is basically like that people deposit, and then it issues Dai, and the reason why people deposit is because they want to kind of go high leverage on their ether, and so it kind of pairs these two sets of users: one that wants stability, and one that kind of wants extra risk together with each other, and it basically creates some, um, or gives one set of participants a guarantee that they'll be pay uh, that. They have this asset that can that, that can be later converted back into ether, but and like specifically at kind of the one dollar rate. And it has some kind of uh, stabilizing network effects. When yeah, it has paired. this. Yeah, it, it has many kinds of stabilizing mechanisms in it. That's fascinating. Okay, this this, this world is awesome. Technically, huh. just from a scientific perspective, it's an awesome mm -hmm. world. As a quick comment, there. There are about, maybe you can correct me on this, but there are about 3,000 cryptocurrencies being actively traded. Yes. Uh, and Ethereum is one of, you know, a lot of people believe that there will be the, the main cryptocurrency. I think Bitcoin is currently still the main cryptocurrency, mm -hmm. but Ethereum very likely might become that, the, the main one. Um, is this kind of diversity good in the crypto world? Do you see it sticking mm -hmm. around? Should there should there be a winner? Like, should there be some consensus globally around uh, Bitcoin or around Ethereum? Like, what's your what's your sense? I definitely think the diversity is good, and I definitely I think also that there's probably too many people trying to make separate blockchains uh, kind of right now. Yeah. I mean, the number should definitely be greater than one, and probably greater than two or even five, um, not three thousand. Not 3,000, yeah, and also not even like 40 high-quality platforms that try to do the same thing. Yeah, there's definitely this range from just like one person who 
just like wrongly thinks that you can create a cryptocurrency in like 12 hours and uh, like doesn't even think about kind of the community aspects of maintaining it going to uh people actually trying but only creating a really tiny one to like scammers uh, to people like uh, making something that's um, actually successful and uh then you know, there's a lot of different categories of blockchain and kind of project in terms of what it's trying to do and what applications it's for. Um, and I think the experimentation is definitely healthy.